What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the OG family. Make sure y'all smash that like button. Subscribe to my channel only if you want to. But look, my beautiful people, we got this when Walmart goes wrong video. You already know, man. One of the most, look, one of the most ratchet places on this earth, bro, is Club Walmart. Yes, I say Club Walmart because everybody be in that joint acting like they at the club. You feel me? But, man, I get anxiety every time. I go into a Walmart, man. I do not enjoy the experience, man. It's just, uh, just let me know how y'all feel about when y'all go to Walmart, man, or any crazy things if y'all seen in Walmart. Uh, I'd rather just shop online at this day and age, you feel me? But look, uh, go ahead and get this video a thumbs up if you're new to the channel. Go ahead and check out my uh, vlog channel down below and also put your notifications on always. I will be dropping videos on that channel really soon. That's also my backup channel, just in case something happens to me here. And we all know that YouTube is very unpredictable. My channel could be gone tomorrow. But look, at the end of the day, man, hopefully y'all having a good day. If you're not, just know you're not in this by yourself. But let's get into this video without further ado. Number 10, massive Walmart brawl. In 2016, over the 4th of July weekend, a massive brawl occurred at a New York Walmart. It started after two teenagers mocked a 24-year-old woman's dress. All parties belong to large families and up to 30 people started brawling. Some went to the sporting goods section to arm themselves with baseball bats. Fortunately, the police swiftly intervened before anyone got seriously hurt. Four people were arrested in the aftermath. They included 17-year-old Nika Brooks, who injured a 52-year-old man after throwing a can of food at his head. Wow. Number nine, Amber Stevenson. I ain't never seen Rebecca that like Mills. that. In June of 2015, Amber Stevenson and Rebecca Mills I got a question though, like why is it, why y'all, look, this is gonna bother me, why y'all whole family in there like that, y'all having family reunions at Walmart? See, that's why it be too many people in Walmart and they be walking slow as hell. Ugh. Brawled in an Indiana Walmart with the former encouraging her young son to take part in the fight. Stevenson claimed that the incident started after she'd heard Mills utter a racial slur to a store employee. Mills, who was riding a motorized scooter, then threatened said employee. Stevenson confronted her, and the women, both in their 30s, started striking each other and wrestled to the floor. At some point, Stevenson encouraged her six-year-old son, Johnny, to punch Mills in the head. Oh, the child, nah. a reported martial arts enthusiast, did as his mother asked, and also threw shampoo bottles at the woman. Security didn't intervene, and neither did bystanders. For fear of repercussions or potential lawsuits, Police officers arrived at the store in the brawl's aftermath, but no charges were brought, and neither woman had been significantly hurt. However, following the release of security... Bro, that's cringy as hell. You got your son in there? Come on, now. I don't even know if I'm gonna keep this part in the video. You know, YouTube don't be playing that shit. But look, it's crazy, though, man. Uh, wow. Wow. Club Walmart. Camera footage, which became viral online. Stevenson was arrested for As asking her son to take part in the fight. She was charged with neglect of a dependent, she asked which is a class six felony, and contributed to the delinquency of a minor. Hey, this Number is for educational purposes, man. Like, be responsible for your kids, man. Just know that your kids are always watching you. You need to be that example out here existing, cohabitating in the real world. That's very important. That's why a lot of these kids are messed up nowadays. You have to really pay attention. They're always watching and absorbing information. And how you act and how you carry yourself. Eight, Gava family. On March the 21st of 2015, a brutal brawl broke out between police officers and eight members of a vagrant Christian family band. It occurred in the parking lot of a Walmart in Cottonwood, Arizona. The Gava family played together in Matthew 24 now, with their band name being inspired by a Bible fragment. Hey, boy, you seen their faces, though? Boy, look like they got their ass whooped, didn't they? But they got, hey, you gotta learn how to protect yourself. Referencing the end of the world. They'd been camping outside the store for several days. The 911 call had been placed following an altercation over the use of the Walmart restroom. At least one member of the Gaffer family had reportedly pushed a store employee. The responding officers approached them in the parking lot at around midnight, claiming they needed to separate them so that they could be interviewed. The proposition enraged the family, and a brawl ensued. An officer was put in a headlock and dragged to the ground. A Walmart employee joined in the melee and engaged one of the gathers in a fist fight. A struggle was then reported over one of the officer's sidearm. 
Three shots were fired, but according to the authorities, it's unclear who in the pileup had the handgun at the time. Uh, Sergeant Jeremy Daniels and 18-year-old David Gabba sustained gunshot injuries to their legs, but ultimately recovered. 21-year-old Enoch Gabba was fatally shot in the head. Wow. Five of the Gabbas, including wow. the family's patriarch and matriarch, were arrested and charged with resisted arrest, aggravated assault, hindering prosecution, and rioting. Bro, you gotta understand though, in these situations, bro, anything can happen. So when y'all out here being buck, man, control yourself. I'm telling you, man, that's the thing. That's the manly thing to do now. You feel me? Like all of this, I'm gonna protect my right, I'm gonna fight everybody. Like, bro, you gotta look. Calm down. If you're gonna do that, set it up so y'all can go inside a ring. I do implore, implore that because sometimes you need to get it off your chest. But go inside the ring, put on some gloves, and do it the right way. Uh, out here in these streets, bro, that's too dangerous. Can control yourself. If you can't control yourself and your emotions, you know, the best of your abilities when you don't be lashing out and hurting people, man, you know, you're not you're not a man. You know? That's a part of growing up. Seven, Richard Lawrence Calvin. In 2011, an elderly man was beaten to death with a baseball bat inside the sporting goods section of a Walmart in Lakewood, California. 47-year-old Richard Lawrence Calvin, who was described as homeless, charged 74-year-old David Oakleaf and struck him in the head with an aluminium baseball bat. Oh, the security no. footage indicated that Calvin was already in the store and wandering the aisles with the bat in hand. After Oakleaf entered, Calvin attacked him without warning, inflicting devastating head injuries. While some sources report that the fatal bludgeoning had occurred randomly and unprovoked. Others claimed that the men had previously interacted in the parking lot. Calvin had allegedly approached Oakleaf, asking for change, and had become angry when the elderly man refused to give him any money. Calvin was deemed mentally fit to stand trial and subsequently charged with one count of murder. Number six, Hamid Aid Said. Great. On Easter Sunday 2013, Hamid Aid Said crashed an Oldsmobile Cutlass through the glass doors of a Walmart in San Jose prior to ramming the car through the store's front entrance. 33 year old Zaid had made several passes around the parking lot and grazed the customer's vehicle. Zaid's cutlass then shattered the glass doors and went 10 to 20 feet in the store, which had dozens of customers inside at the time. Fortunately, none were struck by the vehicle, although some minor injuries were reported as a result of flying debris. Zaid then got out of the car and started attacking those inside with a steel pipe. He injured four people, one of them severely, but no fatalities were reported. Customers were able to immobilize him as they waited for the police. Zaid was taken into custody and subsequently charged, among others, with two counts of attempted murder, four counts of assault with a deadly weapon, and two counts of felony vandalism. You Investigators believe... Bro, you... Look, man, look. You can't make this tough up, man. I'm telling you, like... That's why I'm telling y'all, bro. Be prepared for life. You never know, bro. You could be in there minding your business, and he done drove his goddamn car through the damn building, coming out with some, coming out with anything, trying to hit people with it. That's crazy, bro. That's crazy. That's why I, leave people alone. Stay in your lane. Mind your business. Pay attention. I believe that he was intoxicated at the time of the crash. Number five, crazy. shooting of John Crawford the third. One of the most infamous incidents to have taken place at a Walmart in recent years was the 2014 shooting of John Crawford III. On August the 5th, two officers responded to a call that a subject with a gun I within the that. pet supplies area of a Walmart in Beaver Creek, Ohio. Right. As he was browsing, Crawford was actually holding a BB gun that was sold in the store. The 911 call had been placed by a Walmart customer, claiming that 22-year-old Crawford had been pointing the gun at other people inside. Security footage would show him talking on his cell phone, but it no point was he seen aiming the gun at others when police officers arrived at the scene they approached him believing the bb to be a real weapon according to them crawford didn't respond to their verbal commands of dropping the item and lying on the ground one of the officers then fatally shot crawford in the torso believing he was moving to escape the incident was captured by security cameras but the footage didn't clarify whether crawford was shot before or after reacting to the police presence no charges were brought against the two officers involved. The fatal shooting was followed by a protest maintaining it had been the result of racial profiling since Crawford was an African-American male. His mother also claimed that the footage didn't corroborate the officer's version of events. Number four. I, and it's sad though that, look man, 
we still have to go through this bull. You feel me? And it's nowhere like, bro, you ain't safe nowhere. I'm telling you, like, even with the people that sworn and supposed to like protect us, it's like, that's not made for us. It was never made for us and people that look like me. And you can't like, bro, you can go to the store. Even me, I go to the store and people like, the people just stare at me like I'm gonna steal something, you know? And I got, I probably got more money than all of them, everybody in this store probably put together. But still, they stare at me like I'm gonna steal something. Or they just, you know, they in love with the way I look. It has to be one of those. But it's, man, we, we, we always deemed, like, aggressive. We can't even have a BB gun in the store, you know? Like, it's crazy. We still got to talk about this in 2021, bro. Murder of Melanie Lyons. In January of 2021, a group of four girls fatally stabbed 15-year-old Melanie Lyons at the Lake Charles Walmart in Louisiana. The disturbing attack was live streamed on social media. In the moments leading up to it, the perpetrators, aged 12 to 14, had been spotted in the kitchen aisle. Following a fight with Lyons, they used knives, stolen from the very store they were at, to attack her. They then bragged about it on social media, what? displaying no remorse and claiming they'd stabbed her through the heart. One of the attackers was heard saying, oh well, she dead now. Lyons was rushed to a local hospital where she passed away due to her extensive injuries. The girls were later arrested and one of them, a 13 year old, was charged with second degree murder wow. while the others were charged as principals to the killing. Number three, wow. brawl over PS5. Wow. On December the 13th of 2020, two women were involved in a brutal altercation at a Walmart in Charlotte, North Carolina. <laughs> Yo, are you serious, bro? Like, hey, it gotta be in my city, right? Damn. Come on, Charlotte. I know what it is. Hey, bro, you can tell by each, how they how they build each Walmart, where they at. I know exactly where that one is at. Over a PS5, though. Wow. That's why they don't come out of stores right now. They just, you gotta get them online, but you can get them. A verbal fight broke out in the store's electronics section and multiple reports suggested it was centered on a PlayStation 5. Crazy. The newly released gaming console was in short supply around the holidays, and with tensions high, the two unnamed women argued over it. As the confrontation turned physical, one of them managed to drag the other to the ground by pulling on her braids. She then got on top of her and started punching her in the head. Before she was eventually pulled off, she stomped on the woman's head, Knocking her out. Oh, I did see this video. He didn't intervene, and instead of trying to break up the fight, other customers opted to record it on their cell phones. Neither woman was identified. I did see the video. Both fled before officers arrived at the scene. Yo, Today's son, I seen the real video on that job. Look, I'm not saying that. Hey, hey, it was entertainment. Like they was arguing back and forth. I remember this now. I remember this now. The girl with the red pants, bro, she was cat. She was popping off. You know what I'm saying? Like she was just gonna do something. And when it got real, boy, it was like one of those moments. Like it was at this moment he knew he fucked up. You feel me? Oh, my hat coming unbuckled. But it was like one of those moments. You feel me? And it got real, and she did stump on her head, like pop. You know what I'm saying? She got slept in the middle of the store in front of everybody. She left the store because she was clearly embarrassed. Topic was requested by KG. The other girl ain't want to go to jail. Put the pause on it. And icy halo. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number two, Lewis Lane. In June of 2020, a former employee at a Walmart distribution center in Red Bluff, California, shot up the building. 31-year-old Lane had been fired from the center in February of 2019 for failing to show up for his shift. It's unclear if the attack was solely motivated by a grudge against the company. After making several runs in the parking lot, Lane crashed into the building. After his vehicle erupted in flames, he got out and started firing a semi-automatic AR-15 type rifle. Employee Martin Haro Lonzano oh. sustained critical injuries oh. to which he succumbed in a local hospital. Six other people were injured, but not to a life-threatening degree. Lane was shot dead after engaging responding police in firefight, in which up to 30 rounds were exchanged. Number Nigga, one. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, bro. You shooting up a Walmart job? You serious? 
Like, you really out here, like, shooting some shit up over a Walmart job? Woo! Okay. All right. All right. It's crazy. A Walmart mass shooting. Crazy. On August the 3rd of 2019, Patrick Wood Crucis opened fire on a Walmart superstore in El Paso, Texas. Armed with a WASR-10 semi-automatic rifle, 21-year-old Crucis started shooting from the parking lot before entering the crowded store. Desperate customers were forced to hide and flee to other stores in the adjacent mall. Crucis gunned down 23 people aged 15 to 56 and injured 23 others. What? He then fled in his car and subsequently surrendered I've to never Texas heard about this. at an intersection. The mass shooting was considered one of the deadliest anti-Latino attacks in recent U.S. Wow. history. Upon his arrest, Crucis himself stated that he targeted Mexicans during his killing spree. A manifesto, allegedly authored by Crucis, had been posted on an online message board. It had anti-Hispanic and anti-immigrant content while also supporting white genocide conspiracy theories. Crucis's defense argued that he'd been suffering from lifelong neurological and mental disabilities. In early September, Walmart announced that it would be removing handgun ammunition and some assault weapons from its American stores. That's damn cold-blooded, you feel me? Like, you out here, bro, like, I've never heard about that one. That's a lot of damn people. That's a lot of damn people. And this is why I tell y'all, man, look, make sure y'all paying attention at all times. Especially my males out there. We're the protectors. Make sure you paying attention, bro. And ladies, make sure you got a man that's going to actually be paying attention to stuff like that. You know? I know y'all could do it too, but, you know, that's our full-time job. And it's one of the reasons y'all need to stop playing. You feel me? But, man, you can't make this stuff up. That's crazy, bro. That's why I don't like to go to Walmart right now. There's too many loonies. Too many, too much ratchetry going on. I, if you go to if Walmart, bro, just just sign up for the Walmart app and have them deliver your stuff to you. You can't get no PlayStation from there right now, so don't even go to get one. You know, make sure you just get one online, stay safe. And plus, there's people that be sitting in the parking lot, they wait on you to go get some stuff, especially on Black Friday. They're gonna be waiting. They'll follow you, take your stuff, rob you, shoot you up, all that stuff. Make sure your head is on a swivel. And like I always say, man, spread love because there's too much hate in this world. Love you guys. I'll see you on the next video. I'm out the block.